Hello and welcome everyone. This is Benham and in this video today I would like to talk about conditional value at risk and I will also show you a real world example of five stocks and you will be able to see how historical simulation given VAR can be computed as well as compared with the conditional value at risk. So without losing more time, I would like to show you about the data side, which is basically I have here the share price data of five different stocks, and then I have computed the returns of the five stocks and that has also allowed me to compute the portfolio return because in order to compute the portfolio return i have simply used the sum product function i have defined the weights of each of those five companies my investment weights i've said equal investment 20 percent each and the daily returns have been computed here and then the product of the weights and the daily return have been added to find out the portfolio return using the sum product function and these daily returns are here for all the time period starting from october 2015 all the way to october 2020 and this makes a total of 1243 trading days which is what i have defined here in terms of the number of days uh, which you can see here one two three four that's 1234 number of days so that's the data period and now in this table i will be showing you historical simulation given var which is simple and we can simply apply the function equal percentile and i can take the exe because this is the most uh, this is the 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 accurate one in terms of uh, the percentile algorithm in microsoft excel and then i need to select the return points which is this portfolio return i highlight all these areas and then i just need to align it with the uh uncertainty probability which is one minus the confidence interval which in this case is 10 percent because here it is 90 percent confidence interval i close the bracket and that's what my historical simulation given vr is now what i can do next is i can simply uh, lock these values here so that when i move ahead when i drag it for other cells it works correct so the same return data array is taken l16 to l1249 in each of these computation so i have now obtained the historical simulation given we are in percentage now if i'm assuming that my investment amount is let's say one million three four five six then the expected loss within the next one day because these are daily return data will be this amount which is 14,363 so that is the VR in pound and that's what I can drag uh, but before that if I do not want to have the negative shine I can then simply have ABS written in the front so I don't have negative signs because we do not want to say I have made a loss of minus 14,000 we can simply say the loss that will not be exceeded is 14,363 at 95 90% confidence interval and so on now we want to compute the conditional value at risk also known as expected shortfall this basically requires you to compute the average losses from the cutoff point given by the confidence interval because as you know this is 
the uh, definition of expected shortfall which is expected loss condition to the fact that the losses are equal to or greater than we are given loss so in order to find out the average if you put it in the form of integral equation then this is basically vr gamma and gamma basically means the losses that are greater than those captured within the cutoff rate by vr so that is the equation but mathematically here as you can see this can be achieved very quickly and easily because you just now need to find out what is the number of days for which you need to compute the average so here the total number of days is 1234 so 1234 times your the 10 percent which is one minus confidence interval so that gives you 123 days and similarly here at 95 percent 62 days and 97.5 percent 31 days and 99 percent 12 days now this basically then means in order to find the expected shortfall you will simply do equal average and then you need to go all the way to 123 worst losses so you will therefore find the the losses that are already organized in uh, order of uh, the highest negative starting first so now you will go all the way to 123 which is here you need to stop at this point 123 which is at 90 percent confidence interval so that's what you are going to get for 90 percent uh, confidence interval and that's negative 2.346 that is for uh, that is the average loss for 123 average loss of 123 worst returns so that's 2.346 now if you need to find it in pound terms then you can simply say 1 million is the investment amount times this um, expert shortfall loss in percentage so that's 23,457.78 now you can do the same here for a 95% confidence interval of course the average loss this time should only take the the worst 62 losses so equal average open bracket again you go and find from your uh, losses that are already organized in the order of a smallest return first but then you need to go all the way to 62nd which is here we stop here uh, close bracket that's going to give you the losses that are uh, the expected shortfall losses again i will do the same for uh, the 97.5 which is average for the 31 days and therefore i need to go down to 31 which is here at this point and i close bracket and finally i have now the last item which is the 12 days so i go here equal average and open bracket i just need to find all the way to 12th so that's something i can find here which is these losses so I have now found all expected shortfall given losses in percentage I can simply drag it to find them in pound so you can see that let's just focus on 95% then in terms of 95% given confidence interval as you can see here this loss reported by historical simulation given vr is 19000 whereas the one given by the uh, given by the um, expected shortfall is 
uh, much higher at 29,860. So what we would like to do now again quickly is to see where these losses are in terms of the diagram. So what we can do then if we want to see it in inside the diagram, then we need to construct the 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 frequency of the return and one way to record this is through the uh, the the construction of the bin array and frequency so what we already know is this is the the least this is the highest negative return so that's the worst return and now we need to go all the way to highest positives and that basically means we will then be able to capture all the return data so capturing the return data is the next next task so i can simply say plus not when not not one five oh there's so many pluses i just need one plus 0 0.0015 again why 0 0.0015 it's just trial and error you just want to have uh, captured a good number of the range of return data that's it so now you need to go here all the way and stop at 5.9 and well, let's say six percent positive so you go down until you see six percent positive and you can see here uh, my excel sometime is misbehaving <laughs> but uh, nevertheless uh, we will get there soon six percent is where we need to stop you see it's still not there so six percent is here so i stop at let's say 6.01 percent so which means i have the least negative so minimum and maximum so this then basically means all my returns are within these range so how many of those returns are there i want to count so i can just highlight all of these i can say equal frequency free frequency and open bracket go to my data range which is portfolio return which is this and then go to my bin array which is something we just defined now and close bracket control shift enter and that's my frequency that i have just found you see majority of the returns are concentrated in the center but there are some returns far away on the left and far away on the right and that's something we want to capture using the diagram which means insert uh, this diagram here such as this uh, is what we wanted to make and uh, not just this in the in the horizontal axis we want to change the the cell references so in the horizontal axis now what i would do is i will capture these these return statistics so that's what i have just done click ok so now if i go and see that the diagram oh i've done something wrong here let me do it very quickly again equal select data add it and over here i'm going to capture these bin array so now should be fine in terms of the data so yes that's what i wanted again just to clean this i do need this here so i have this uh, histogram i'm going to put it on this side so that we can compare the var uh, given by historical simulation and the expected shortfall given vr so as you can see what we can say to computer now is show me where exactly is this uh, where exactly these values are so the historical simulation given vr at 95 percent confidence interval is basically this uh, number here minus 1.992 so that's minus one 1.992 so where is minus 1.992 1.992 will be in between these two so what i will do i will just uh, put something there to indicate exactly where is minus 1.992 1.992 is let's say here somewhere minus 1.992 so that's what i have kept here 
and let me fill in the shape with a different color so that's where it is but then i would also like to find out where is the expected shortfall given at the same 95 percent confidence interval it's minus 2.986 so where is minus 2.98 2.98 in the diagram is here 2.99 so 2.98 will be somewhere here very close to 2.99 so that's what i have again identified and therefore i'm going to give it a color uh, let's say uh, red because uh, it's more risky on this side so now what we can also do is very quickly if you want it change the chart type and i can have the chart type as line and we can see it from here so what is happening now is of course there is this tail stressed more towards the left so the data is skewed towards the left so this is negatively skewed uh, data but then it is also telling you the story that the VR given risk is here at which point the the loss amount we can say will not exceed 19,918 or what we can say is 5% of the time loss to be in the tail side that's what it says but it doesn't say much but it doesn't say more than that it's just saying 5% of the time the loss uh, will exceed the quantile yep yeah, but with the help of conditional vr what you have been able to do now is you've been able to capture the losses from the cutoff point which is here all the way till the end but then you are reporting the average loss from here all the way to the end and the average is falling here so with the help of this a more appropriate risk is able to uh, we are able to identify and this is also the reason why the regulatory bodies are now emphasizing more on the expected shortfall than the common methods that we have learned uh, which are variance covariance historical simulation and monte carlo simulation methods so thank you very much for your time and thank you for listening and browsing my video